Hello, in this video, I'll be showing you how to use the Quick Scan iOS software. So, on your desktop, look for the R icon that says Run Yes 3DS. Double click on it and allow the application to open. Once you enter the main screen, on the left side, you would see the patient button. Click on it, and to create a new patient, on the upper right side of the screen, click that blue button that says plus patient. Once you do this, it opens up a new screen, and this is where you type in your patient's information. So type in the name, the gender, and the date of birth of the patient. These are your three data that you would need in order for you to save the patient and create that file. So once you hit save, your new patient now appears on your patient list. Once you're ready to scan, on the far end of your patient's name, there's a plus case. Click on that button and it would show you another screen. Now on this screen, you're going to choose what type of scanning you're going to do whether it's restoration, orthodontics, or for an implant case. So in this example that I'm going to be showing you, we're going to be doing a restoration. So select that restoration, and then the next thing we're going to do is select the tooth that we're going to be working on. So let's, let's say we're doing a crown on number three. So just select the details that you will need for that crown, and... Um, once you save that, it should appear on the upper right-hand side. So as you see in this picture, you have tooth number three. The prep type would be a crown. Material is zirconia, color A2, and that's it. Once, you're, once you have all this information, then you're ready to scan. So on the left side, click Scan. Another window will open up, and it would launch the actual scanning system. So once the scanning system is launched, the lower arch is already the default area that needs to be scanned first. So go ahead, click the button on, the, on your scanner to activate the live video on the lower right, and then you can start scanning. The usual scan pattern is occlusal, then move towards the lingual, and then move towards the buccal. So that's the usual scanning pattern. Uh, one scanning tip is that once you start with the occlusal, just go all the way to the other end of the arch in you know, one smooth stroke as much as possible, and then you move over to the lingual. Again, continuous scanning, smooth continuous scanning, and then you move over to the buccal area. Once you reach the buccal area, you can pause midway towards the midline of the patient, and then you switch positions and then start scanning from the posterior, again moving towards the front. Now, as you scan, you would notice several areas uh, that may have some voids. So those are represented by the holes that you see, the white areas that you're seeing in this uh, example. So those voids can be filled. Once you're done with the lower arch scanning, you may proceed to the upper arch. So same technique, you start with the occlusal, then go all the way to the lingual, and then do the buckle. So in this video, um, I'll be focusing on scanning that prep area on tooth number three. But I will continue with the full arch scan first, finish it, and then go back to that area. So in the event that you see yellow arrows, those are your guides to help you position your scanner. Those are actually indicators that you need to bring the scanner to those areas and roll over the incisal or roll over the occlusal um, 
aspect of the T. So here you would see that I'm scanning more in that prep area on 2.33 because this, technically that's the area that I'm most interested in since we're doing a crown. So in cases like this that you're just doing a crown on one side, you don't have to do a full arch scan. You can just do quadrant scanning. So you can start from tooth number one all the way up to six or seven. As long as you get that um, prep, the tooth prep, and then the two teeth adjacent to it, especially the, the proximal aspect of it really good, then you're set. So make sure you double check that area, double check that prep area, that there are no voids whatsoever, because that's the area of interest to you. You may use the scanner as a, as a remote control. So all you have to do is uh, make a long press on the scan button, and then over it will show you the different options. To move from one option to the next, just do short presses. And once you're at the option that you want to do, do a long press, and it will enter that, that scanning mode. So after you've taken the top and the bottom, you again take the bite. So in the left and the right side of the patient, make sure the patient is biting on centric, meaning don't just ask the patient to close, but ask them to swallow for you to be able to get the right bite patient. So just scan from the posterior, move towards the anterior area. You may stop scanning for the bite uh, once you see the top and the bottom occlude. So do the same thing again for the other side. Start from the posterior, move towards the front, and then you stop once the arches occlude. So once you have all three scans, click Refine Check. That way, the scan data would be clean and all the voids would be filled. So the refine check takes about a minute, sometimes less, sometimes more. It depends on the amount of data that you actually scan during the process. Once the refine check is finished, you now have your data and here on the screen you would see the occlusion so the different markers you would see it over there so the next thing i want to show you is that on this stage on the refine check stage when you go back to the upper arch since we have selected tooth number three as the prep tooth you would be able to mark the margins. So click on upper, and then on the right side of the screen, there's an icon or there's a button there. The very last button on the right side, it says margins. So click that button, make sure it's activated, it's colored blue, and then below it, you would see options that says mark margin line. So click that. Once you click that, um, you can press Control Z and then start marking the margins along the tooth. So just keep pressing Control Z and then the left click on your mouse to mark the margin. If Control Z is not working, try Shift and Z. So Shift Z or Control Z and then start marking your margin. So basically, you mark your way around the tooth. 
and then making sure that you're actually marking on the margins. You can rotate your screen, use your mouse to rotate the model or rotate the scan. And then once you meet your starting point, just double click on it and it will define your margin line. If in the event you need to edit some points on the on your margins, just click on the red button the red uh, dots just bring them up make sure again you sc you scroll you zoom in you zoom out you move your model left right for you to be able to mark your margins correctly so once you're done with that just click close now another function that is present in the rest of it, uh, in the restoration view would be undercut determination or you know, undercut function. So basically, this is going to tell you if your prep has an undercut. So the best way to do it is to position the scan on the path of insertion of on the path of insertion of your prep. So move it around and identify the path of insertion and leave it at that view leave the screen on that view once you're there you click calculate so once you hit calculate it will show you some areas of green yellow and red red areas mean those are undercut areas and you might need to prep that side a little bit more but in this case, um, there's no undercut on that particular view as evidenced by no marking on the scan. So once you're done and you're, uh, you've checked your prep, the next thing to do is to export your data. So click Export uh, beside the Refine Check face. And then if you're going to just export your files, Click export directly and then it will create your files. So you're going back to the scan screen and you would see all the files. So if you're ready to send it to your lab or if you're ready to um, save it on your computer, then just choose open source export. Then make sure the export path is correct and it saves to where to the location indicated in your export path. Now, if you're sharing this data to your lab, you can just click share and the data quick sharing screen appears. You may copy the QR code or you may copy the URL and then paste it. Paste it on your email to your lab. And uh, once you do that, uh, the lab would be able to download all your files from the cloud. Same screen, if you click on open folder, it would actually open up that folder location where all the files are saved. So here you would see that there's a PDF report and all the other SDL files. So on your PDF, you have your patient's data and even the type of restoration and the shape that you are planning to do on your patient. So everything can be seen on that PDF file. Okay, so that's it for today. If you have any questions, feel free to comment. Let me know. Thanks.